Assassinations of figures such as Patrice Lumumba, Thomas Sankara, and Muammar Gaddafi highlight a troubling pattern of targeting African leaders who posed a challenge to Western influence. These leaders were viewed as threats because of their anti-colonial and anti-imperialist stances, advocating for African autonomy and opposing resource exploitation on the continent. Patrice Lumumba's assassination, which involved the CIA and Belgian authorities, is a prime example. His vision of a united and independent Congo clashed with Western interests, leading to his death. Similarly, in Burkina Faso, Thomas Sankara's revolutionary leadership threatened established power structures, aiming to reduce reliance on foreign aid and challenge Western dominance. Muammar Gaddafi's drive for African unity and economic independence, including efforts to establish a gold-backed pan-African currency, posed a significant challenge to Western powers. The ideologies and actions of these leaders directly contradicted the West's influence and exploitation in Africa, eventually leading to their targeted removal. This historical pattern explains why many African leaders have historically sided with Western interests. However, there is a growing shift in contemporary African leadership that is characterized by a willingness to challenge Western dominance and assert independence, reflecting a changing narrative in which African leaders are increasingly rejecting subservience and reclaiming agency for their nations. Leaders such as President Ibrahim Tror and others have vowed to do what killed previous leaders. The West is not silent and is plotting against them through covert and dirty means. So, what are the West's plans and which African leaders are targeted? Let's find out more in this video. Captain Ibrahim Tror is number one on the West's hit list. Ibrahim Tror was born in Kera, Bondokui, Muhan province in 1988 and attended primary school in Bondokui before moving on to high school in Bobo di Lasso. He studied geology at the University of Ouagadougou, where he was active in student associations. He was known for his quiet and talented demeanor. Tror graduated with honors and joined Burkina Faso's army in 2009, receiving military training in Morocco before being stationed in Qaeda. Tror joined the UN peacekeeping force Minus Ma in Mali in 2014, having attained the rank of lieutenant. Returning to Burkina Faso in 2000 after displaying bravery during rebel attacks in 2018. He helped with operations against the jihadist insurgency in 2018, including the Autopumanu offensive in 2019. Trorai, who was promoted to captain in 2020, became a spokesperson for disgruntled soldiers in the north, expressing frustration with the government's insufficient support. Trori was a key figure in the January 2022 Burkina Faso Kudida, supporting the patriotic movement for the protection and restoration of the military junta. Trora and his colleagues attempted to refocus junta leader Meba's handling of the jihadist insurgency, but ultimately chose to overthrow him. In October 2022, Trora declared himself head of the junta and interim president, promising democratic elections in July 2024. Trora maintained a formal demeanor as president, carefully controlling communication to project strength. In February 2023, he expelled French forces, expressing a desire for diverse international partnerships. Troré's government supported federation with Mali, invited Guinea to join, and sought closer ties with Turkey and Russia. He declared a general mobilization against rebel forces in April. Troré questioned the planned restoration of democracy in 2024, claiming that elections would be contingent on increased security. At the age of 34, Troré holds the distinction of being the youngest current president globally. He has prioritized initiatives to enhance his nation throughout his tenure, avoiding exclusive alignment with Western interests. Because the West knew Abraham Troré was not interested in running for office, which would mean remaining in power and challenging the West's dominance, they launched a covert coup against him. As a result, in September 2023, disgruntled military elements attempted but failed to depose Trore. Trore, who was suspected of having ties to the Russian mercenary organization Wagner Group, denied collaboration and expressed pro-Russian sentiments. Trore announced the reopening of the Russian embassy in Burkina Faso following the 2023 Russia-Africa summit. 
Despite allegations, the Traoré regime appeared to prefer using its own forces to combat jihadists and had not requested Wagner's assistance as of May 2023. He has been the country's interim leader since September 30, 2022, succeeding Paul Henry Sago's interim presidency. Traoré's administration expelled French forces fighting a local insurgency in Burkina Faso in February 2023. Following this decision, a proclamation was issued expressing a willingness to explore alternative partnerships, emphasizing the importance of fostering win-win collaborations and diversifying Burkina Faso's international relationships. Traoré's government then supported a federation with Mali and Yu and invited Ghania to join. All three nations are currently governed by military authorities, and if the union materializes, it would be the largest country governed by military authorities. Following the Russia-Africa summit on July 29, 2023, Traoré expressed his people's support for Russia and announced the decision to reopen the Russian embassy, which had been closed since 1992. Traoré advocates for African heads of state to stop being manipulated by imperialists, claiming that the continent can prosper on its own by leveraging its abundant natural resources to build a more robust continent. Trari has faced multiple failed coup attempts since taking the helm. Given Trari's commitment to making Africa less reliant on foreign aid, speculation persists that some of these efforts may be influenced by Western influences. Authorities in Burkina Faso successfully foiled yet another coup attempt against the country's military rulers. Intelligence and security services are critical. According to the military leaders, a group of army officers and others planned to seize power, potentially causing chaos. It was also revealed that these soldiers had foreign support, exposing the failed Western plots. The military prosecutor confirmed the arrest of four people, two of whom are still on the run, based on credible allegations of a state security plot involving officers. This incident came after the arrest of three soldiers on suspicion of plotting against the ruling military government led by Captain Ibrahim Tror. Despite these developments, the capital of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou, appeared calm, even after the attempted coup was announced. Pro-military government demonstrators took to the streets amid rumors of a possible mutiny. It sent a clear message that any assassination or coup attempt against Ibrahim Tror would fail miserably. Not only is it difficult to replace Ibrahim Tror, but due to his close ties with Putin, he becomes a formidable leader whom no one dares to challenge. If the West attempts to assassinate Ibrahim Tror, it will face the consequences from Russia, which it does not want. The president of Ghana, Nana Addo Dankwa Akufo Addo, is number two on the hit list. He has been Ghana's president since 2017, at the age of 79. Akufo Addo who was born on March 29, 1944, has a long political history, having run for president in 2008 and 2012 under the New Patriotic Party. Following defeats in those elections, he won in 2016 and again in 2020, both times successfully defeating the incumbent. While his government initially gained popularity for promoting a Ghana Beyond Aid agenda, it ran into difficulties later in his tenure. Tenure, which was marked by severe financial crises and a decline in press freedom. However, he only ensured the repression of Western media outlets that spread anti-Chinese propaganda. Akufo Addo has taken a relatively moderate position on LGBT rights. In November 2017, he suggested that the legalization of homosexuality in Ghana was unavoidable. He did, however, clarify that it was not a current government agenda. As of August 2018, he reiterated his position that same-sex marriage and homosexual decriminalization would not occur under his leadership. Because his country, and Africa in general, will not accept the moral imperialism that the West wishes to impose on the rest of the world, he has advocated for a more powerful Africa free of Western influence. Not only that, but he has consistently demanded reparations from the West and forced it to confront its atrocities. He has also criticized the United Nations for acting as a lapdog for only the Western world, ensuring that such shady organizations never abuse his country. Because he speaks boldly, he is viewed as a threat to the West and should be eliminated. The president of Kenya, William Ruto, is ranked third on the hit list. William Kipcher, who was born on December 21, 
1966, supports Samoy Arab. On September 13, 2022, Ruto was sworn in as Kenya's fifth president. Prior to taking office, he served as Kenya's first elected deputy president from 2013 to 2022. Previously, individuals in this position were known as vice presidents, and they were appointed by the president. Ruto's political career has seen him hold three cabinet positions, Minister of Home Affairs, Minister of Agriculture, and Minister of Higher Education. Ruto served as a member of parliament in the Eldoret North constituency from 1997 to 2007, first under the Kanu Party and then under the ODM Party. From August to December 2002, he was the Minister of Home Affairs under Daniel Arap Moy's administration. Ruto served as Minister of Agriculture in the Moa Kibaki administration from 2 than 8 to 2010 and as Minister of Higher Education from April to October 2010. Throughout this time, he focused on power and forged alliances for his political future. Although he initially ran for president in 2007, losing to Rila Odinga in the ODM party primaries, he later endorsed Odinga's candidacy. Ruto withdrew his presidential candidacy in favor of Yuru Kenyatta in the 2013 election and was nominated for the deputy presidency, ultimately winning the election. In the 2017 Kenyan general election, he was re-elected as the Jubilee Party's deputy president. Ruto successfully ran for president in 2022 under the United Democratic Alliance at Despedia Falout, where Kenyatta supported his opponent, Ryle Odinga. Odinga's allies accused the election of electoral fraud, but international observers found no evidence to support such claims. During the Russia-Africa summit, President Ruto criticized the West's insistence on the attendance of all 54 African leaders, calling it both demeaning and ineffective. He proposed that Africa be represented by special envoys who engage with Western leaders more practically, fostering meaningful discussions beyond photo opportunities. Ruto emphasized the importance of constructive dialogue and a more equitable platform for Africa's voice to be heard and respected globally. He contended that if meetings between Africa and countries such as the United States, Europe, India, Turkey, Japan, and Russia are not conducted differently, gathering all 54 African leaders before one individual from another location is not intelligent. He has also expressed reservations about Western involvement in African affairs and taken actions in line with this viewpoint. Ruto has openly criticized Western meddling in African affairs, particularly during international summits. Ruto has always emphasized the importance of Africa asserting its autonomy and resisting Western nations' positions. Ruto's political agenda is characterized by a nationalistic approach that seeks to reduce reliance on foreign assistance while also aligning with an anti-Western sentiment that envisions African nations standing independently without extensive reliance on external assistance. Ruto has also been outspoken in his opposition to the legalization of LGBTQ rights in Africa, including Kenya. He has repeatedly stated that this is not a priority for his country, aligning with a more conservative and traditional stance that opposes Western cultural influence on social issues. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos about Black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let us now proceed. Rwandan President Paul Kagame is ranked fourth on the hit list. Paul Kagame is arguably one of the most powerful presidents in the world, not just in Africa. Paul Kagame, born on October 23, 1957, has served as Rwanda's fourth president since 2000. Prior to becoming president, he led the Rwandan Patriotic Front, a rebel armed force that invaded Rwanda in 1990. The Rwandan Patriotic Front, RPF, played a critical role in the Rwandan Civil War, ultimately putting an end to the Rwandan genocide. From 1994 to 2000, Kagame served as Rwanda's de facto leader as Vice President and Minister of Defense under President Pastor Bismungu. Following that, the vice presidential position was abolished. Kagame was born into a Tutsi family in southern Rwanda, and his family fled to Uganda when he was two years old. During the Rwandan Revolution, which ended centuries of Tutsi political dominance, he spent his childhood there. In the 1980s, Kagame served in Yori Museveni's rebel army, 
rising to the rank of Sinor Uganan Army Officer after numerous military victories propelled Museveni to the presidency of Uganda. After the death of the previous leader, Fred Regima, on the second day of the 1990 invasion, Kagame joined the RPF and assumed leadership. By 1993, the RPF had gained control of significant territory in Rwanda, prompting a negotiated ceasefire. The assassination of Rwandan President Juvenal Habyarimana sparked the genocide, which killed an estimated 500,000 Tutsi and moderate Hutu. Kagame restarted the civil war, which he eventually won militarily. During his vice presidency, Kagame wielded control over the National Army and was instrumental in keeping the government in power as efforts to rebuild the country began. Following a disagreement with the RPF, Pastor Bisimungu resigned in 2000 and Kagame took over as president. Bisimungu was later imprisoned on corruption and inciting ethnic violence charges, which human rights organizations deemed politically motivated. According to the West, Kagame's rule is authoritarian, with human rights organizations accusing him of political repression. It's because he doesn't take orders from the West, but rather keeps it in check. Foreign observers have mixed feelings about the regime, and while Kagame has prioritized national development, critics raise concerns about political freedom. Kagame, who was chastised for lifting term limits, confronted Western journalists and bloggers, whom he described as arrogant for questioning their condescending attitudes. He boldly declared, we are not a people to belittle. And then asked the West, what about those in your country who committed crimes in mine? He frequently says things like, Africa doesn't need adult supervision. In Africa and Rwanda, we must decide what we want for ourselves in the future. As a result, he is among the most powerful. He is one of the most powerful African leaders capable of challenging Western dominance. The president of Uganda, Yawari Museveni, is ranked fifth on the West's hit list. Yawari Kagupta Museveni is a prominent figure in Ugandan politics, military affairs, and revolutionary history. He was born on September 15, 1944. Since taking office in 1986, he has wielded considerable power, despite widespread criticism of his administration as autocratic. He has repeatedly criticized the West's double standards and declared that China's diplomacy is superior to the West's. As a result, the West should be afraid of him. And it's for this reason that the West has been plotting against him for years. Museveni's political career took a dramatic turn following his defeat in the 1980 election, sparking the Ugandan Bush War that eventually led to Milton Obote's ouster. Scholars classify Museveni's rule as either competitive authoritarianism or illiberal democracy. However, these scholars are mostly from the West, and they are frustrated that he cannot be controlled. The media is under government control, and elections in Uganda have been widely criticized for a lack of transparency and freedom since 1986. During his presidency, the president has seen an increase in anti-LGBTQ legislation, involvement in regional conflicts such as the First Congo War and Rwandan Civil War, the Lord's Resistance Army insurgency in northern Uganda, and notable constitutional amendments such as the removal of presidential term and age limits in 2005 and 2017, respectively. In the most recent chapter of Museveni's rule, he won a sixth term with 58.6% of the vote on January 16, 2021, despite allegations of ballot box stuffing, inflated voter turnouts, and human rights violations. Surprisingly, the West has spread all of these allegations in order to portray him as a dictator. He has signed a contentious bill criminalizing same-sex behavior, which could result in the death penalty for aggravated homosexuality convictions. This anti-LGBTQ law was condemned by local and international human rights organizations, as well as Western governments. But one thing is certain, the West will not decide what is legal and illegal in Africa, as well as the moral standards. The West has used every tactic available to control him. The World Bank, for example, a vital source of budget support for Uganda, suspended funding in August, citing a misalignment with its values. Joe Biden recently announced that Uganda will be kicked out of the Africa Growth and Opportunity Act because its president refuses to be a Western puppet. Museveni, who rose to power through a protracted guerrilla war, has a strong anti-colonial sentiment. 
This sentiment is rooted in the history of European colonialism in Africa, which left an indelible mark on the continent. Museveni's opposition to what he sees as external meddling can be interpreted as a response to historical exploitation and manipulation by Western powers. He also argued for national sovereignty and self-determination. His anti-Western stance is frequently presented in terms of preserving Uganda's autonomy and opposing perceived Western efforts to dictate the country's internal affairs. However, this raises the question of how preserving one's sovereignty endangers the West. Museveni has expressed a desire for economic independence from Western institutions at times. This was emphasized in his response to the World Bank's decision to halt funding due to the anti-LGBTQ legislation. Museveni's declaration that Uganda would look into alternative funding sources and reduce its reliance on foreign institutions reflects a determination to move away from what he sees as economic hegemony. Dependencies on Western Assistance Colonel Goyth, president of Mali, is number six on the West's hit list. Colonel Asimi Goyth, born around 1980, has served as Mali's interim president since May 28, 2021. Initially, he was the chairman of the National Committee for the Salvation of the People. This military force seized power in the 20 Zoo and 20 Malian Coups, deposing former President Ibrahim Babakar Kida. Following the 2021 Malian Coup d'etat, Goyth took over leadership from Bandao and was officially declared the interim president of Mali. From that day forward, he appeared to be one of the most powerful African leaders and a desire to replace him arose in the West. On July 20, 2021, Goyth was attacked by a knifeman while praying at Bamako's Grand Mosque during Adel Adda celebrations. After failing to harm the president, the assailant was quickly apprehended. In total, two people were detained, with one mistakenly identified as the attacker's accomplice, but later identified as a special forces soldier. Colonel Asimi Goyth, Mali's interim president, has expressed views and taken actions that could be interpreted negatively by Western interests. He has consolidated power, expelled French troops, and publicly criticized the West. He launched the operation to suspend all elements that provided the West with leverage in Mali to influence the political party. As a result, he outlawed non-governmental organizations, NGOs, the majority of which were French or Western. He also censored Western media in the country including Radio France International and France 24, implying an attempt to control propaganda flow. Colonel Goida's government also outlawed French-funded aid organizations and abandoned French as Mali's official language. Yes, he refuses to accept charity, sending a strong message that he is more powerful than the West believes. What are your thoughts? Is the West powerful enough to depose all of Africa's powerful leaders and get away with it? Or are the days of Western power over? And it is now impossible for it to participate in any of these conspiracies. Let us know what you think these powerful African leaders should do, knowing that the West is plotting against them. Would you like to see more videos like this one? If you answered yes, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on a topic that is rarely discussed. Black culture, civilization, history, and evidence demonstrating how glorious blacks have been. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next video.